What's up, hey, everybody? Welcome back to yet again another movie review, and we is now at Nightmare on MC4, The Dream Master. Ah, oh, boy. Where do I start? There is so much wrong with this movie. Don't be surprised about the grade for this movie. So, before I dive into the pros and the cons, I gotta give you a little bit of plot of what this movie is about. So, this movie tells the story about the returning cast, with at least two of them and one complete different character, coming back to take down Freddy because Krista, Kristen Parker, got this weird sense that Freddy is coming back and she just might actually be right. Wait, she is right and this time Freddy is back with some revenge. And he is looking to take out Kincaid, Joey, and Kristen for the last time. But along the way, he gets them fuck me. Ah, oh boy. This is the weirdest chapter yet. This whole movie is weird. Y'all thought that I said part two was weird? Wait until you hear the con. Diving right in with all the pros I have for this movie. Holy shit. Let's kick it off. My first pro would have to be the characters are somewhat interested. That's all I can say. I got more on them in the cons, but the characters that we were given here were decent. Okay, that's all I can say. Like, they were decent for what they were going for. They were decent for what they were given. But that's all. Going along with that, another pro would have to be Alex Johnson, which is one of the characters in the movie who is being played by Lisa Lisa Woodcock is a sea of beauty, but yeah, her character, aside from everybody else, she's the only person in this movie that is a good character, okay? That's it. That's the only character that I like in this whole movie. She brings something to it. Everybody else, I talk about them in the con, but she's the only character that I like. That's the only positive thing I can say about any character. Another pro for me would have to be the director of the movie, uh, Rennie, Rennie Harlan or something, him right here. I do appreciate his his directing style in the movie, even though it was a little fucking weirded out what he was trying to do with this movie. But we'll get more on him in the cons. But like I said, I appreciate his take on the movie. I do like some of his movies. You know, he did on uh, Dow Hall with Bruce Willis. He did a couple of other movies that I like, but right here... That's the far as I'm going to give him some props for. It's for Nightmare MC4. Just like I said in my plot for the movie, we got the three returning characters, at least two of them. I would say seeing them back on the screen was just a great thing to see because you watch them in part three and you want to see them carry on the story. They did a good job until they didn't with going to my cons, but when you do see them, it, it feels good, you know, it feels good to see them back looking to take on Freddy once and for all again. This time, look to put his ass down forever. And another pro for me will have to be the one kill that I like in this entire movie is when Freddy sucked the life out of the girl's body when he said you want a tough face. I think that's a funny, funny line and also a very cool death because it showed how the dream sequence work, Freddy kill you in a dream, and then in, in real life you see the girl having an asthma attack, which makes sense to the dream world because you can't see Freddy outside the dream world, right? That is the only pro that is left. Everything else is fucking con. So diving right into the con, uh-uh. Let's just get on with it. My first con for this movie will have to be Freddy one-liners. I feel like Freddy one-liners in this movie was done by force. They wasn't well delivered. I'm sorry, but Robin England did not deliver those lines good enough. I mean, maybe the lines were delivered good enough. I just didn't catch it good enough. I don't know what it was, but the one-liners just felt forced. It, it was like he was trying to be too funny and went too campy, too weird, and, and too over the top. It, the, the, the fucking joke, the one-liners was just not good. Now, there was some good, I will say that. There was some decent lines, but the majority of them were just some of the cringiest one-liners I've ever heard 
in the fucking franchise. And see, this is what I mean by, like, like what I said in part three, where, for, like, you want Freddy to be serious. In this movie, Freddy should have been serious. There are so many moments where Freddy should have been dead ass serious, but they failed every single time. There was a line in this movie that just, I feel like, don't belong here. Now, going back to what I said in my pro about the director, right here in my con, I do appreciate him. I really do. I do appreciate his take, his vision, what he saw. Give you a little bit of fun fact on him. He was basically a homeless man, and so New Line gave him a job, and this was his first project. I have nothing against up-and-coming new filmmakers. I want to be one myself, but I have nothing against him. I like his vision. I see what he was going for. But this movie just felt so bad. It felt so weird with this guy behind the camera. I just did not like certain shots that he did in this movie at all. From the shots, the atmosphere, it just it just didn't work. Everything like like everything just looked so weird to me. And another con for me would have to be what I said in my pros that were good right here in my cons about the characters. Yeah. These characters, aside from Alicia Wilcox, these characters were some horrible fucking actors and actresses. The people they picked to act in this movie is not a very good actor. I, don't, I didn't like none of the acting. I didn't like none of the characters. You have like the same typical characters. You got the jock, you got the popular guy, you got the dickhead brother. You, I mean, it, this movie was just so out of place for me. It was so out of place. I, I don't know who this movie was for. Another con for me will have to be the replacement of um, Patricia Arquette character. Now, according uh, like according to some of her co-stars, they said during the production and the making of the movie, the directors and the producers did not want to pay her the money that she felt like she rightfully deserved. That could be true. Like I said, I don't know. I didn't do no hard on we like not we said, but I didn't do no research for it. So, I probably would believe it because she did become a mega star after part three. But yeah, Tuesday night, taking on the role as Kristen, she, she brought nothing to that character. She was annoying. She couldn't act. I, I didn't like her at all, okay? She can't act well for damn. She brought nothing fresh to that character that Patricia Arquette brought to that character. She bought, she was bland as fuck. She had no flavor to her. I think that she just took that as an opportunity to get on the map, to get her name known Tuesday night. Where the fuck is Monday night? <laughs> Whatever, like I said, I didn't like her character. She was annoying, she was weak, she was bland, and that was a horrible take on that character for me. Okay, look, if I die, I want you to piss on my grave and bring me back to life, okay? You get that? Thank you. Uh, yeah. I had to go and get my dog to try to be funny with that. But, yeah. Funny get resurrected by dog piss. That's another come for me. Okay, look. I love, I love dogs, okay? I really do. But having him come back from flaming dog piss... Wow, this movie is just fucking weird, bro. It is so weird. I don't know who this movie was made for. Another con for me would be killing off all three characters, our main three characters from part three, Joey, uh, Kincaid, and uh, Kristen. Even though Joey, how Freddy killed him off with the butt naked girl in the waterbed, that was going to happen regardless because Joey is a horny little fucker. So, so that that was going to happen. But Kincaid and Kristen, I don't think that death was appropriate for those two characters. Knowing the fact that they've been through hell in the third movie and then you killed them off like that. So disrespectful to them characters. You built up all that shit in part three and just kill them off that fast. It's just fucking stupid to me. Not only is stupid, but it's disrespectful to the characters itself. Going back to what I said, some of the one-liners was good. Well, right here in my cons, I would have to say, I think they lean a little bit too hard in the comedy side of Freddy in this film. And it gets worse. 
So you're going to hear me say that a lot of more time. But it gets worse in Nightmare on Street Part 4. It gets so much worse. The line, not only they felt forced, but they felt don't belong in the fun times. I don't feel like they try hard enough, but the joke just was not funny. Another con for me would have to be the fucking kills. Even the kills look silly. They look weak. They look kitty. It looks like some shit you would see in a fucking Disney movie or a Nickelodeon film. This looks, this doesn't belong here. I mean, there's one specific kill with like the woke, the girl inside the look thing. That shit was fucking gross. But it looked weird and strange. I don't know. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't get this movie. I don't get this movie. Another con for me would have to be the lighting. The atmosphere of the movie, the brightness, I felt like the brightness was too in the face. It's like everything looked so bright, especially the Liberty on Karate scene. Like, well, I, I, think, I think it's a comfy or something. Oh, no, no. And my last con for this movie would have to be Freddy's makeup. I'm, 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 just, I'm just not a fan of Freddy's makeup in this movie. I think his makeup look a little too campy. A little too weirded out for me. It just it just did not work. So my grade for Nightmare on M Street is going to be a D plus. My overall thoughts is that Nightmare on M Street 4, the Dream Master, it's good. It's okay. It's not something that I we watch all the time. It'll be three. But I'm just kinda curious on where I'm gonna place different on my ranking, you know? Because I don't know, man. Y'all gonna have to wait for the ranking video to really see what I really think about these movies. But like I said, Part 4 just isn't it. it it's weird, it's campy, it's so over the top. Just wait till y'all hear my review on Part 5. This shit gets worse. But that's pretty much gonna wrap up today's Pacific Review. If you want to get in touch with me, remember, all my social media links will always be linked in the description down below. And also... Make sure you drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on that bell notification so that way when I drop another lit video for the channel, you'll be the first ones to get it. Don't forget, stay creepy, stay spooky, and I'll catch you here with you in the next video.